We all know the importance of how we represent ourselves. The things we say and the things we do influence the people around us. It's all about the message we are sending, including the things that we wear. Christians can be more aware of the messages we bring to others in their clothing with Covenant Press. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory store that is fearfully and wonderfully made. If you want to wear the message of Christ and Christianity, then go to their website at covenant-press.com. That's www.covenant hyphen press.com. For the next 24 hours, you will get 25% off the purchase of $50 or more using the discount code GROWTH at checkout. Sign up and become a member to receive points for future purchases. Again, that's covenant hyphen press.com. www covenant-press.com to get 25% off your purchase of $50 or more using discount code GROWTH at checkout. Tell your friends and family about covenant-press.com so we can all share the message. Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Welcome to another amazing episode of Laquita's Toolbox Live. I am your host, Laquita Monley, and it is a fabulous day today. And I'm just excited because you know what? I'm alive, I'm breathing, and this is another opportunity to do great things in my life. And I hope you guys feel the same. Listen, today we're in for an amazing treat. I have a really great guest in the studio with me today, Ms. Teresa, and she's going to drop some amazing gems. Now you guys know those that are regulars on the toolbox, get something to write with and something to write on because you don't want to miss the tools. And most importantly, you don't want to miss how to properly apply the tools. And Ms. Teresa is going to give us some amazing tools today as we dive into a discussion with her about the transformational power of EFT and how we can use it in our life and our business. Ms. Teresa, welcome to the Toolbox, ma'am. How are you today? I'm doing great, Laquita. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I have no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> I'm, just so, I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to be a guest. I'm excited about EFT and I'm excited about these tools. And I'm all about learning new tools to help us in, in life and in business. And even as we were discussing in the pre-show, we as entrepreneurs, we have a whole different set of challenges. And so mm -hmm. most of my listeners are entrepreneurs. So the tools we can get to help make things easier, that's what it's all about. This has been the best one I've ever found. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. That's awesome. So listen, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you did. Okay. I'm Teresa Lear Levine and I live in Maryland. I am a mom of four boys and married. I could tell you about certifications and things like that. But honestly, the thing to know about me is that I'm an entrepreneur who has done things the hard way and had to learn the hard way how to do them in an easier way. And I now love helping other entrepreneurs, especially female mompreneurs to overcome their challenges. Because like you said, we have our own set of challenges as entrepreneurs that like everyday people don't understand and working through them isn't always easy. And they're not the kind of challenges are one and done. Usually the fears and the limiting beliefs and the imposter syndrome and stuff is stuff that even if we're aware of it mentally, we haven't worked through it on a nervous system level and it's going to, it just keeps resurfacing and resurfacing. So 
the technique that I mainly use and manipulate to work with all the different things that I help people with, including myself, is called EFT. And that stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. It's been around for decades and it's based in scientific things and Chinese medicine and stuff that's been around for thousands of years. And yet it only seems to be recently getting the kind of uh, word of mouth and everything else behind it so that people really understand what an amazing tool that it is. Some people might have heard of it called tapping before. And it's not uncommon these days for a lot of therapists to incorporate some tapping or some EFT work into their sessions. Everybody does it a little bit differently though. But when we do EFT, we're working with our meridian endpoints which are the same areas of your body that an acupuncturist or a massage therapist or what have you would access in order to release physical pain and things like that. But we're also combining that with modern psychology and we are releasing those negative emotions. The coolest thing I think about EFT is that anything you can feel, whether it's physical or emotional, can be improved upon or eliminated completely when you use EFT with it. So it gets all four of your bodies, so to speak. So we have a mental body, we have a physical body, we have an emotional body, and we have a spiritual body. And it gets all of those incorporated so that no stone's left unturned. Because so often we have been taught to look at things, especially, you know, personal development. And we're here, we're talking to entrepreneurs. I know personal development is a big thing with all of us. And we are always looking to learn and to grow. But you know what happens with most people? They learn something and then they can't figure out how to actually bring it to fruition in their own life, how to make it happen, how to make that knowledge actionable. And even if they have the action steps, sometimes it's just we get in our own way. We have this self-sabotage and this psychological reversal that EFT is genius at reversing back the way it needs to be or getting it out of our system so that we can take the action that we want. I read a lot. When I say I read, I mean I listen a lot because I'm an audible junkie. So there's hundreds of books in my audible library and I generally read like two or three books a week. So I'm like, I plow through books, but I would realize so often years ago that even though I knew so much, whatever that's worth, I wasn't making the advances that I wanted to be making. You purchase a book with an intent behind it and something that you want to come out of it, and then you're done, and now what? And you combine the self-sabotage that we all have with, for me, some ADHD on top of that, and you really have a lot that sometimes you feel like you're working against in order to get to where you want. All I know is that after decades of doing entrepreneurial things of many varieties, I'm looking for ease and I'm looking for flow. I am not looking for struggle and strife. But that seems to be what we so often find over and over again <laughs> is all the, the hardest possible way to do something and, and <laughs> we're just not allow ourselves a different way to, to process things. So point being is that EFT is a really great way to get your nervous system on board. Because our nervous system, that fight or flight drive that we have within ourselves and those forces of inner resistance, they will overcome motivation. They will yeah. overcome enthusiasm. You really need something compelling in order to keep moving forward on something. So for me, EFT is that thing that each and every day I can kind of get myself out of my way using it and move on to the next thing. And it, you tap these meridian endpoints. So there's ones on the, the top of your head, all around your eye, like the orbital eye bone. There's one below your nose and below your mouth. And then your collarbone and your chest are great points for releasing negative emotions and things. And then okay. under your arm, for women, that'd be like where the bra kind of crosses. So not like your armpit, but a little bit lower. Okay. And when we do EFT, there's like a formula for it. And that's what like when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I'm coming up with that stuff and I can really easily and on the fly put together what's necessary for what they're going through. Okay. But the essence of it is that whatever the negative thing is that you're dealing with, it needs a voice. We can't cover it up with toxic positivity. We can't affirm ourselves out of these feelings that we truly have. And we have to get rid of the crud that's below those really negative feelings, be it sadness or 
even rage or despair, hopelessness, whatever's under there that you're feeling needs to have a voice. So that energy, because everything is energy, can move up and out and not be stuck in you. That's essentially what you're doing with EFT is you're getting stuck energy unstuck. Unstuck. You said something at the very beginning that I want to yeah. dig into a little bit because there's a lot of buzzwords going on right now. A lot of buzzwords. And one of them is limiting beliefs and identifying your limiting beliefs, dealing with them and eradicating your limiting beliefs. And then you said something else right then that was really powerful to me, made me want to smile. I probably did. Toxic positivity. Love that, by the way. Love that. And because you, you're right, you can't affirm stuff away. Like, I, first of all, I have to believe the affirmation for it to work. So let's start there. Yeah. It doesn't work if I don't believe it. And if we make that leap too big and we go from having thousands of dollars of debt to trying to affirm that we're a millionaire, our, we're not going to, we're not going to connect with that goal. Yeah. And then not only is it not going to happen, but we end up with what I like to call goal trauma. Mm -hmm. where you've gone after something all of these different times in your life, or, or maybe just once, maybe there was one time where you really went for something with all your heart and put it in and it didn't work out for you. That goal trauma is something that I spend a lot of time working with people on because it sticks around and it really puts you in a place where even if you say you want to achieve this goal, you can't invest in it the way that you need to because you literally, you don't have the support of putting your heart back into it. Right. The energy centers of your body to, they're not flowing freely and they're not there to support your mission. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Like, so what are some techniques uh, that you've used with clients with EFT to help them deal with whether it's identifying or I know what it is. I just don't know how to fix it yeah. with those limiting beliefs and also dealing with getting rid of the toxic positivity yeah. where they're like, okay, I tried that. That don't work. Like, where the affirmations, that's not working for me, ma'am. Like, this is not working. I'm broken. Can you feel yeah. it? Yeah. Well, what if somebody came to me with that very kind of thought of I'm broken, we'd be exploring that first, okay. feeling brokenness. And we would be going back to begin with to, to go to like things that happened long ago in their life, as far back as we can go and figuring out all those places where maybe there wasn't safety for them in their feelings and things and working through those and tapping as we're doing that. And we're, we're talking, we use the, the karate chop point on the side of the hand to set things up. So maybe if we're talking about being broken, it would be, even though I feel so broken, I love, accept, and forgive myself. And we set up with these phrases and then we tap through the points, voicing the negative. So, you know, starting at the top of the head, I am so broken. I feel all this despair. Why do these affirmations not work for me? And going through all the things, if I've been talking with somebody, I'm obviously going to have some specific pain points that are theirs that I can pull out and put into what we're working with. EFT favors specificity. So the more specific you are when you're going through that, the better. And the best thing I could say, if you want to understand EFT, I'll give my social information at the end here, but there's so many tapping rounds that I've recorded and it's easier than listening to a podcast to just go like watch a video and do a round. And you can find I have rounds that are pre-recorded about imposter syndrome or all the kind of things that tend to come up often for entrepreneurs and things where you can kind of tap through and try it. But with my clients, I'm typically doing that, the modern psychology and the intake and things, and then combining that with EFT tapping rounds, visualization, meditations of the visual variety, and bringing that all together in order to... To clear their energy system, I use a lot of chakra work. These are all things that I don't expect people to understand. They're not things, they're not things that you need to understand when I'm working with somebody because the coolest thing when it comes to emotional freedom techniques is that they're all scientifically based. If you do it, if you follow the recipe and you have bright guidance with it, Mm -hmm. It just works. You don't have to believe it. I mean, you could literally come to a session and be like, I don't believe this. This is like woo woo stuff. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And we could work through something and it would be easy to see how well it works. So skeptics are always fun to work with because this is scientifically based. I have a lot of fun making it fun and interesting and weaving in people's beliefs, whether they're, if they're spiritual beliefs or whatever else, and just ranting about things and going on and on and just letting all the negative stuff flow. But you don't have to understand 
why it works in order for it to work. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to understand your energy system in order for me to help you clear it so that it is supporting you because we do, we have all of these different energy centers in our body. They're, they're called chakras and they're like these portals of energy that are from our root and like the base up into above where our body even ends. And that energy and it being clear has everything to do with manifesting goals, bringing things to fruition and making them happen because otherwise you get stuck. You can only get a goal so far along the chain before you get stuck against something that is, is invisible to you, that you don't even realize is there because it's blocked energy that could have been blocked from any number of things. When you ever have that, like that feeling, I don't know, almost like it's like a buzz, like when something when you get scared about something, like maybe you're, if you're afraid of heights, then you go to the edge of a building and you kind of get that like that cringy feeling or mm -hmm. I don't know, do you have any fears or phobias like that where like it kind of just hits you? I have a, an amazing fear of war. It's like very real. It is not fake. Oh my goodness. Like, then I have a story to tell you about that too. So like when you think about water or look at water, does it like almost like an energetic zap in your body? So here's a transparent moment for the Laquitas Toolbox audience. There are times when I'm washing my hair in the shower, it freak me out. If that water gets too close in my face and certain, like I have to breathe through like recently, about a, two weeks ago, I went to get my facial and long story short, there was a particular technique that the esthetician, she'd ask my permission. We're really good friends. So I'm like, knock yourself out. This is my self-care moment. And what she was applying to my face it was heavy and it was wet. Mm -hmm. And I had to count through and talk to myself in my head not to leap off of that chair and leave it because it feels like it's going to suffocate me or drown me. So, And that's painful because that was intended to be your time for self-care and to feel good. And my children, my family that's love right. to walk. I mean, I don't mind going to a beach. It's not that I won't go to a beach, but if that water gets... To my waist, I'm real done with wherever we are. This is as far as I'm going. And I'm not doing anything else. I'll sit in a hot tub and things like that. But there are limitations. And if you try to take me past that limitation, it's not going to be a good thing. So here's the interesting thing with this. That's the perfect example of an energetic blockage. You have blockages in your system that are making that fear and that phobia come back over and over again every time that you're faced with water. So interestingly enough, one of the pre-founders of EFT who did other kind of like touch techniques, his name was Roger Callahan. He had developed this whole algorithm for how people would treat their, their psychological distresses and their different negative emotions and things, but he hadn't quite figured out exactly how it was all going to work. So he was working with different patients and he was starting to have them work with like, he was actually holding points on their body. So he was holding these acupressure, acupuncture points as they would like talk about whatever it was that they were distressed by. And he had this one patient, Mary, who was horribly afraid of water. And it's like, she's like the example every time that you like research <laughs> EFT because they work through it together in one session, like wow. lasting an hour and she would not shower. She would not like, she was severely afraid of water. And his office had a pool in the, like you could see out the window of his office, the pool that was at his home. So the water was there to be seen and she didn't even really want to look at the water. And she goes through this and she's, I guess, there. I don't know exactly what her story was or why she was afraid of it, but they were talking through it. They were using the points and things. And at the end of the session, she gets up and she just walks out to the water and starts going in. And he's freaking out like, oh my God, I'm going to have like a lawsuit on my hands. Like, what's going on? And he's like, you know, what, what's it going to be crazy? Like, what's going on? She's like, no, I, I don't feel that way anymore. Like, she's like, I'm not crazy. I'm not going to like go do something silly. I'm, just, I, I'm not bothered by the water anymore. And that's kind of exactly the feeling when you have a successful round of EFT, when you get to the root, you just you either don't care about the problem anymore or you don't feel the same way. Mm. It's not, some people are like, was it like hypnosis? Like, do I forget or do I, no, it's not, it's not that way at all. You're still going to have the memory of whatever, you know, it was or anything like that, but it won't give you that feeling anymore. And mm. it's amazing. I've seen a lot of case studies with EFT working on fear of water. And if that's something you ever want to get over, you should definitely talk, but it's amazing you know, what people can do in just like a session. And oftentimes well, I have to like, this interview, he's going to want me to talk to you. So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, so that's the kind of stuff. Like when people have those kind of feelings, that's usually kind of where we start. We go back in time. We we figure out what we can resolve from the past. Obviously, I I don't want anybody to have to spend time lingering in the past. We have no power there. But it gives us a lot of points of reference and it gives us a lot of information that informs the present so that we can make our best choices here and now because right here is the only place that we've got that power going on and a lot of times we're still giving our power to the past or Uh we're projecting our worry and our anxiety to the future and there's Mm -hmm. nothing we can do in either of those places so learning to kind of cut those cords and those energetic ties so that you can be fully present and powerful in the space that you're in is kind of what it's all about and I know that was huge for me because in so many of my businesses, especially when I was doing stuff when my kids were like really little, mm-hmm. I always felt like, I'm like, I'm putting too much into this. And I, I was, I would get down on myself because it's like, I really want to excel at what I'm doing, but I feel like I'm not showing up the way that I want to as a parent. And there's all this frustration because there's only so many hours in a day. And I was already getting up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning and staying up until late and try, trying to do all the things and be all the things. And not giving myself the grace, the acceptance, the forgiveness, the understanding that I would give anybody else Mm -hmm. and making everything harder for myself. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works like that. Like there's not a probably, I don't know any entrepreneurs that would not be with the North and South right now. Like, yes, I get that. I understand that. I live that or I have lived that, especially in that startup phase of your business and, and you're trying to get things going and you are the everybody that it takes and i'm not going. saying that it's even avoidable in yeah you know, some of these so, sometimes it, but not avoidable so like given that audience uh because we do have a lot of mompreneur side hustlers that listen my people what are some healthy things from that we need to implement or tools from EFT or resources that can help us navigate that, those stressful points because stress is real in the life of a mom, period. Whether you are a W-2 employee, entrepreneur, or stay-at-home mom, life is stressful with all of the things that we have to manage because you're still a manager as a mom and managing your home. You're still a leader there in that capacity and, and probably the biggest capacity, let's be honest. What are some things that woman can implement to help her? Simply learning EFT can be a total game changer. I have a program that teaches all of it and makes it really simple and condenses like all of my master level training into training that takes like less time than it takes to watch Hamilton. And then you have all of, you have the tools at your fingertips. And then I think that when people really have a lot of, you know, big issues that they're trying to overcome, the typical go-to is talk therapy and talk therapy is wonderful. I am not saying anything bad about it, but when we're in that state of building a business or whatever, and we feel like we don't even have the time to like wash our hair or spend the time with our kids that we want or whatever else, we don't have time. We don't feel like we have time to spend on that. For me, it was always like, Am I going to get the right therapist? Are they going to get me? Are they going to be able to help me like get through this? Or am I just going to waste time I don't have working on things that aren't the problem? And EFT makes all of that so much faster. When you clear a block from like way back in your past, it's like a domino rally. Like it's like it knocks over so many other things that were there and then you don't even need to work on them. Like it's amazing. Whereas like you can spend years, decades even in talk therapy, like cycling on the same topics over and over again and it feels good to talk about it for a bit but then something comes up that triggers it again and you're right back where you started because it never cleared the root issue Mm. so learning EFT and just making a practice of and even if you don't learn how to do it like I said find the videos or whatever that I have out there or that other people have recorded and you can find EFT for like anything out there in a pre-recorded tapping round that you can just tap along with most tapping rounds are between three and 12 minutes. It's super quick and effective. And once you learn the formula, you can kind of implement it on your own. It can be as simple as just one point. Sometimes I just like just that collarbone or that chest point can be so calming to people. And what you're doing when you're, I mean, (laughs) 
this is the simplest way that you can kind of release some stuff from your system. Let's say you're having a bad day. You pick up the phone to call and complain or rant or whatever to your mom or your friend or your husband or business partner or whatever it is. While you're doing that complaining, which we all know is bad for us, and we all know shrinks our hippocampus and does horrible things for us. While you're doing that complaining, let's at least get some mileage out of it. And just tap here. You will be releasing so much while you're doing that. And you'll feel so much better afterwards instead of getting off the phone, still being ticked off or whatever and going about your day. It'll get you way more mileage. And if you're on the phone, nobody sees you anyway. Or you don't just, you can even just rub the point and that's fine. And we have these points all over our body. So just finding some quick little ways that you can do that. It lowers your cortisol. That's the big thing that's happening when you do EFT. Your cortisol gets lowered. So if, if you can lower your cortisol by up to 43% in wow. 10 minutes. Wow. Like I always say like, just pause and think about that because there's people out there that are looking for weight loss solutions and things that simply do that one thing. And you can do that one thing and work out some stuff that's going on up here that's really messing with you and get like, it's two for one. So it's a huge deal. And yeah, that is. Like, yeah. And there's so many benefits that you can even borrow from yourself while you're doing it. I was doing a session with one of my clients. It was last night and she wasn't feeling well. And it had been a little longer than normal between our sessions. She's like, Teresa, like, I didn't want to miss our session because I have so much I want to work on and like, I need this, but I just, I feel awful. I was like, well, if you want to reschedule, that's fine. But you know, let's just take a look at how you're feeling right now. What's bothering you? What are your symptoms? I said, we're not going to work on those specifically. I know we have other things that you're here to work on, but just tell me like what you got going on. At least we rated it. We always rate things zero to 10 with 10 being like the most distressful of how you're feeling and zero being like, I'm cool. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And she was at like a seven and a half. She was feeling pretty lousy. And I was like, okay, I've taken note of that. And let's do the work that you came here to do today. And at the end of the session, I checked in with her again and I was like, so just out of curiosity, how are you feeling? Like, how's, how's all that stuff that wasn't feeling good physically in your body before this? She's like, oh my God. She's like, I feel so much better. She's like, I'm like two or three now. She's like, that's crazy. And I was like, you just totally, you borrowed those benefits from yourself. We worked on limiting beliefs and fears and whatever else was going on. And in the meantime, you're regulating your nervous system and you're unblocking those other blockages that are making you feel bad physically. Feel bad. So, wow. I mean, it's amazing like how our body is so interconnected when we are not feeling good emotionally, spiritually, psychologically those things manifest in our physical. Absolutely. They manifest in our physical. So it's from, from my belief system, I totally believe that spiritual dictates the natural. And so mm -hmm. if I'm, if I'm balanced in my spirit, if I'm taking care of my spiritual self, my spirit man, and I, in that, as a Christian, I do that through prayer, meditation, and also through some, through, I don't want to say affirmations or dec I'll say declarations based on what I believe. And when I'm in a good flow, let's say that, when I'm in a good flow like that, not that the other stuff isn't happening in the work, it's happening, but I, it definitely releases the, the feel good hormones. Mm -hmm. That if I am physically not well, I feel much better. Yes. I feel much better. And it's, and it I, especially helps when I start my day like that and when I end my day like that. So that's my next question. Is that something that you recommend for your clients that they do in session with you only? Or is it something that you recommend they do at particular periods throughout their day as like a management tool? It kind of depends on what they're dealing with. I personally try to find something. There's always something that we, we can tap on. We say tap on it. And because when you can literally treat anything that you can feel physically or emotionally, there's always something. And you can use it to increase good things too. It's not just rooting out negative. You're feeling amazing. Like pump it up a few notches with a, a round of something and make it even better. So there's, I never find a short things to work on. I remember thinking it was going to be hard. Like when you go through EFT certifications and things, you're supposed to make this list of like a hundred things to work on with yourself. And I was like, oh, that's going to be hard. It was not hard at all. I could find <laughs> 500 things to work on. But <laughs> not as hard as it sounds. But if you're somebody that is, like if you were dealing with that water phobia, perhaps, mm -hmm. you're probably going to need to do some tapping in the presence of water or in those situations when yeah. things are heightened. When you can drive up the stress of whatever it is that you're trying to release 
before you tap, you can release a lot more. Mm, okay. So okay. situationally, there could be recommendations that have to do with what the person's trying to work on. Other than that, it's you can't overdo it. You can't hurt yourself. You can't screw it up. Like, it's not like you can do it wrong and you're going to feel worse. So it's pretty full, pretty foolproof there. And like you were saying with the, the prayer or the declarations or whatever it is that you like to do, and you have that feel good hormone releasing, there's the, the other end of the spectrum because cortisol can't be high if oxytocin is high. Mm. And one of the other. So on the flip side, EFT does that same thing. It increases all of those feel good hormones while it decreases the ones that don't make us feel good. And that's pretty amazing just to be able to do something that can really help you release the feel good stuff too. It's awesome. So my recommendation would be that people should tap whenever they feel like they, they need it. When they need it. That's real good. That's real good. Or when they have the time to do it. Because sometimes, I mean, it's not like people want to want to spend the time tapping on childhood trauma or I mean it's not like people are like oh I just can't get enough therapy like never get enough of that like <laughs> hash, up, hash up the past and all that stuff that I wish never happened or went badly or whatever but if there's if you got to deal with it and we all do because you're going to deal with it one way or another whether, right. it's, whether yeah. it's stuck in your system and like you said manifesting physically or some other way or whether you voice it and you get it out I can't think of a faster, more effective way to not have to linger there longer than you'd like to. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Teresa, how can the Toolbox audience, where can they find you? Where can they find your videos to learn more about tapping, to learn more about EFT techniques and how to implement them in their life? Yeah, I've got videos on all different platforms. So I would just, if you, you know, Google my name, Teresa Lear Levine, you're going to find a ton of videos out there. And you can find me on Instagram, find my name, Teresa Lear Levine. And I've got guides on there. If you are you know, familiar with Instagram guides, there's like tap along guides. So that's a great, easy way to section them out. And if you're, if you're somebody that's looking to go deeper with that and find out how to apply it to you, because mm -hmm. that's, I think, where people get a little lost. They're like, okay, it's kind of like when, when something can be used for everything, people kind of avoid it and they use it for nothing because they nothing. Yeah. don't know how to specify it to what people to move them forward. Yeah. And that's where I can really come in and help. And I do have like complimentary breakthrough sessions that I will do with people for that very purpose to do a little intake and consult with them and understand this is what they're dealing with. And for me to be able to say, this is how I would use EFT to go forward. And you can access that by going to gamechangingconversation.com. And you can find out how to connect with me personally and actually talk one-on-one -on -one like we are and discuss what your issues are and how this could potentially make a huge difference in, re in resolving them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Toolbox audience, Google Teresa Lear Levine. And no worries uh, on that as well. Look in the show notes. Her contact information, those relevant links will be in the show notes. Teresa, it has been such a pleasure having you. This was a yes. nice conversation. Thank you for having me, Laquita. Oh, no problem. No problem. Oh.